Shalom Aleichem, Bokir Toh, good morning, welcome, welcome to our viewers and to our anytime. I want to dedicate this year to the Atzlacha, uh, Ben Zion, Ben Dosa, him and his family, and to the Refua Shalema, Av Malka Chana, Bas Beila, Besor Sh'ar Choyle, Yisrael. Miriam Basleya, for Refua Shalema, sure. Parashas Tazriya, Inyanei Tzaraas, Lo Shonara, Metzoira, Bris Mila, and Inyanei Diyoyma, getting ready for Pesach. We'll see how much uh, time will uh, allow us. So Pasa Shemini last week ends with all the wrong foods that one is not allowed to eat. Ma'achalos Asuris. Pasha Tazriya starting this week with Metzoya. What's the smichus? What's the connection? Why are they following each other? Why is Tazriya following Shemini? Shemini, when they tell us, stay away from the wrong foods, they're telling us what not to put in our mouths. Tazriya, when they're telling us to stay away from tzaraz, tzaraz comes because of Loshon Hara, they're telling us what not to put out from our mouth. So that's the connection. Be careful, just like you have to be careful. And you have to watch the best echsherim, people use only the best, best echsherim. What goes into their mouth, so too one should be extremely careful what goes out of his mouth, but it's much more than that. Because in Pashas Tazriya Mitzuya, when the Torah discusses the halachos of tzaraz, and the Metsuya, which it all comes from Lashon Hara, it's three times the amount of psukim that are discussed in Pasha Shmini is supposed to stay away from the wrong foods. Which the Torah is, if, is telling you, you have to be extremely careful what goes into your food, but you have to be three times more careful what comes out of your mouth. You have to be careful what goes into your mouth, but three times more. How uh, careful we have to be with what comes out of our mouth. The Torah keeps talking about nega and saras, nega, 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 saras, saras, nega, 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 nega. Any difference between the two? Synonyms? Nega and saras. Nega and saras. Torah switches off between these words. Any difference between the two? Nega, tzara. Same word? Identical? Tzara is a nega. So it's the same thing. Synonyms? Synonyms? Shnei Mikov Echa Targum? Rashi? Anyone? Still a few more hours for Shabbos. Rashi, Perek Yud Gimel Pasuk Ches says, Saras, Loshon Nekeva. Nega, Loshon Zacha. That's the difference between the two. Shmiras Aloshon. Chelek Aleph, Perek Yud Zayin. Sha'ar Atvuna says, frightening stuff. Mamish frightening. He brings on the Zohar HaKodesh. When a person says, Loshon Hara, down here in this world, at the same time, they speak about him upstairs. The prosecuting agents say all kinds of Lashon Hara and point out to his shortcomings. His point, he is pointing out to other people's faults and they're doing the same thing at the same time to him, about him upstairs in Shemaim. How frightening it is. But it goes much more than that. And the Chofetz Chaim says, that's not frightening enough. One has to carve into his heart, that's the language of the Chofetz Chaim, what the Smak says, Smak is the Rishonim, in the name of the Riva. The Riva is one of Bali Atoisves. And he says, let's say you see Reuven pursuing Shimon. Reuven is running with a gun to kill Shimon. What are you supposed to do? You, Mr. Levy, you're seeing Reuven running after Shimon with a gun. He's going to kill him. What are you supposed to do? Is it a mitzvah? Mitzvah! Stop the pursuer! Tremendous mitzvah. Great. Says the smack in the name of the riva. If later on, at one point, 20 years down the line, 45 years down the line, Levi, who did this unbelievable mitzvah and saved Shimon, later on will be involved himself in some kind of pursuing they will go retroactively back to his file and will turn the mitzvah that he did back then into an Aveira. Doesn't stop them. He says, for every single thing, ben Adam lachaveira. When you do a mitzvah, you said, Loshon letoeles. You had all the conditions met, everything is great, kosher le mehadrin, with the stamp of the badat and the bagat. Mehadrin. Midoraisu midorabonon. But... And this is even more scary. If you were involved in the past in some kind of a Lashon Hara, 
or if you're going to be involved in the future, in some kind of Lashon Hara, dust of Lashon Hara. Now they go back and they change the mitzvah that you did back then, letoeles, with all the hechsherim. They switch it and they say, oh, that was an Aveira. How does he know this? Yehu. Yehu was commanded by a Navi, killed the household of Achav. Why? Because they were involved in idol worship. Yehu did it. They were bowing down to the Baal, Avodah Zohar, and to Agalim, the greatest Lashon the greatest Avodah Zohar. He destroyed it. He removed the Baal from Klal soil. He did a tremendous favor for Klal Yisrael, HaKadosh Baruch Hu liked it, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu liked it so much that they gave him kingdom for four generations. Later, the Navi comes to Yehu and charges him. How come you killed the household of Ahab? He says, what do you mean house? I was commanded by a Navi to do so. Yeah, but later Yehu himself was involved in Avoid Zorah and the Gemara says in Sanhedrin Kuf Beis, it was Bishoigig. Bishoigig. He is called Tzadik Araba, a great Tzadik. Bishoigig. So now they go back and say, oh, wait a second. It wasn't so clean what you did many years ago because now that we see we, you have some kind of association, some kind of a shaykh who's to avoid the Zohar, they went back and they flipped that mitzvah that he was involved in. He listened to a Navi, the Navi told him to do this. But now they go back and they say, oh, you are charged with murdering Ahav and his household. It's not misfrightening. Says the Chofetz Chaim, I'll give you a raya. Sanhedrin Kufei Amut Beis, Amaisi. Reb Chia and Reb Shimon, the sons of Rebbe, Rebbe Daonosi, the author of all the Mishnahs. They're sitting outside the shul and talking about halachos of tefillah. While they're discussing this, Rebbe Shmuel by Rebbe Yossi, another Tana, comes close and says, what are you guys talking about? Hilchus tefillah, oh. So they delve into the matter. While they're discussing Hilchus tefillah, Rebbe, Rebbe Daonosi comes in and he's about to start the shir. So he goes all the way to the front and everybody runs inside the shul to catch their seat. And the Gemara says, Reb Chia and Reb Shimon, the sons of Rebbe, were very light individuals, thin and quick. So they ran to grab their seat. Rabbi Shmuel be Rabbi Yoise, Agav Yukre, since he was a very large individual, shall we say he had a very clear caloric advantage of, over others. A very, very clear one. Very large individual. So he was Mifsa Ve'azil, he was walking very slow. You know how big he was? So Gemur in Bab Metziah, Pe'idalad Amudalef, Pe'idalad Amud Beis, I think. The Gemur says that when Rebbe Ishmol Bab Yossi met Rebbe Lazar, the son of Rebbe Shem Bayochi, son of Rashbi, when they met and they stood together and talked, their bellies were so gigantic that two bulls would be able to go under them. So we're talking about giant, giant people, the Gemur says. So because he is so bigger than life, he is walking very, very slow. She already started. So one of the Tanaim present, whose name was Avdan, says to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yossi, excuse me, excuse me, the Shir has started. And not, it's not very Bekavodik, and it's not Anava at all to start walking in the middle of a Shir. So Rabbi Shimon Bar Yossi says to him, do you know who I am? My name is Rabbi Shimon Bar Yossi. I came to learn Torah from Rabbi. It's only right. And it's the covered of Rebbe that I'll sit in the front. So he says to him, Do you know who Rebbe is? The Gemara says in Soit and Memtesa Mutbeis, Mishemet Rebbe, Batla Anava. Rebbe is a symbol of Anava. You're not exactly displaying Anava when you're saying this. So Bishmur says to him, You know, HaKadosh Baruch was also very humble. And yet, Moshe Rabbeinu came and learned Torah from him. Moshe is also very big humble, but it doesn't match up to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So if Moshe can learn from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I can learn from Rebbe. So Avdan says to him, excuse me, is your name Moshe? So he says to him, is the, your Rebbe's name HaKadosh Baruch Hu? She starts. After a few minutes, somebody sends a message to Rebbe. Mr. time I get a text, an email, I don't know. <laughs> And they tell him there's a Yevama outside that we need to check if she is 12, she's under 12. What's her story exactly? Chalitza, Yibum, Miun. So Rebbe says to Avdan, the one who just had the discussion with before with Rabbi Shmuel Bar Yossi, go outside and check her out. See what the story is. 
He goes, takes care of business, and he comes back. Now, where would we expect him to sit? All the way in the back. He just yelled at Abishma Bayosi, it's not right. And he walks all the way to the front to his seat. Abishma Bayosi looks at him and says, whoa, 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 wait a second. You have to practice what you preach? What are you doing? Says the Gemore Tana Be'oisasha. At that moment, Avdan got tsaras. His two sons drowned, and his two kalos, his two daughters-in-law, did miun. A truckload of yisurim. Why? Says the Chofetz Chaim. That's exactly what the Riva was saying here. What he was saying before to Rabbi Shmuel Bar Yosi is the biggest mitzvah. He's right. He is telling him, it's not right to conduct yourself like this in the middle of a shir. It's Rebbe, it's not a nova. But now when you yourself are involved in the same thing, we go back to what you did before and we say, that's not a mitzvah anymore. Now it's a novella. So therefore says the Chofetz Chaim, how careful one has to be. If you have all the terim in the world, but you yourself have some kind of a shaykh, whether in the past or in the future, doesn't make a difference when, they're going to go back and turn that mitzvah and say, well, wait a second, how come you did that? That wasn't a veira. How frightening does that have to be? The Be'er Yosef says there's another example to that. Esav came back from the field. He says, Yaakov Avinu prepared a nice stew. Let me have some. He was so tired. Why was he so tired? What was he involved in that day? Hunting. Only hunting. He killed. He killed. Rashi. He killed. He did five Averos, not just killing. Five major Averos. One of them he killed. Who did he kill? Nimrod. Nimrod. Chazal say he did five major Averos. Tell me, tell me, killing Hitler is an Avera? He killed Hitler. Nimrod is Hitler. He killed Ahmadinejad along with Hitler, along with uh, Naslallah, and whoever else you want. Do you have a bigger mitzvah than that? No! Chazal says it's an Avera. Was it an Avera? Because later on, when Esav himself became involved in killing, we go back and we say, well, wait a second, so it's not a mitzvah to kill Hitler for you. For you, it's an Aveya. Okay, you have the same association with killing as he did. I'm just frightened. It's not just the Chofetz Chaim. It's not just the Be'er Yosef. It's the Ramban. He says the same thing. Perek Tezvav, Pasuk Yudalet. Daha Megdavar, and Shmo, Islamet Beis. Perek Havzayin says the same thing. We have a strong coalition. Amek Dava, Shmira Salashu, Be'er Yosef, and the Ramban above all. Mamish, a strong coalition. And therefore, it gives no, uh, I don't know, trepidation before you even think. Maybe it's a good idea to say, La Shorara, think twice. So, because he killed him because? Because later on, Esav himself went into the practice of killing. That's what he does for a living. He enjoys it. Once he, inv once he is involved, we go back and we say, oh, so that was a murder, it wasn't a killing. It wasn't a mitzvah. Uh, how does tshuva go into this? How does tshuva go into this? Tshuva erases everything. But before you do the tshuva, later on, if you don't have a chance to do tshuva, or even before, and that's the scary thing, even if before he was involved, there's a gemara in Kiddushin Pei Beis Amudalef. Everybody knows, I think once we discussed it. Tov Shebaroifim. Again, the best of doctors goes to Gehenna. We said many, many different interpretations. The Pashtus, the best of doctor, he really is the greatest doctor. And he knows it. He's already. And because he knows he's so good, he doesn't consult with us. So no matter how great you are, well, people will make mistakes. And because he doesn't consult with others, people will die. And therefore, because he's killing people, Tov Shebaroifim, La Gehenna, Pshat. But some explain. You know who the best doctor is? It's not talking about the doctor. A guy who saves others, he helps them all day long, he saves lives. So who is the best of doctors that goes to Genu? The best doctor in the world is Baal Lashon Hara. Why is he a doctor? Chovetz Alvavos and Shara Kniya Perek Zayin, Ocho Sadikim and others say, Chovetz Chaim brings them. When Reuven speaks Lashon Hara about Shimon, an unbelievable thing happens upstairs in the Shamaim uh, accounting department. Reuven loses all his mitzvahs. They transfer to the heavenly account of the person whom he spoke about, to Shimon's heavenly account. Shimon, that he, the guy just, he, Reuven spoke about Shimon, Shimon loses all his Averos. He is rid of him. And they move to the heavenly account of Reuven, the one who spoke Lashonara. 
Now, why do people get sick in the world? Why do you get sick? Because there's a virus? Chas v'shon. Louis Pasteur already said, the virus is nothing. The terrain is everything. He's right, scientifically. The terrain is everything. But our terrain, a spiritual terrain, is everything. Why does one get sick? Because he has a virus. So Kodesh Baruch sends him a little awakening call. If one doesn't have a virus, he can't get sick. So who's the best doctor in the world? The one who spoke Loshonara. If you speak about someone Loshonara, all the persons of Avos go into your account, the person is healed. He can never be sick. So the one who spoke Loshonara is the best doctor in the world. Now we understand, the best doctor, this type of a doctor, where does he go? Huh. Goes to get him. He doesn't speak Loshonara, doesn't stop speaking Loshonara. Where do you think he's going? He goes to get him. So if one is not scared enough after this and still interested to speak Loshonara, there has to be seven conditions that have to be met. If you don't have these condi seven conditions, stay away from this practice. What are those seven conditions? Anyone? I guess, Bo Hashem, nobody here needs or ever thought about the idea of speaking Lashon Ha'ah. Give all that. Has to be the toilet. If it's not good for constructive purpose, stay away. That's one out of seven. Without exaggeration. No exaggeration. Not even Yehuda. What else? You have two out of seven. About yourself. You can speak about yourself. No, no, we're speaking, we decided to speak about Uven. But there still has to be seven things. There's are Allah parameters, who are you allowed to speak about? But when you when we finally have a heter to speak about a person, person what has to be met? No, no, anger, no, no exempt I'm doing it. It has to be. If I have all the seven conditions met, and I'm the simcha that I'm able to help Klal Yisrael. To, do, to harm the person. Oh. If you saw something which was harm, and you saw it with your own eyes, not that it's viewed as, oh, that's a very destructive thing, what he's doing. You have to see the damage. There can't be an exaggeration. You first have to go to him and rebuke him. And if that doesn't work, then you can think about it. You saw it with your own two eyes, not that you heard from somebody else who said, you know what this guy did? You have to see it with your eyes. If what you're going to say is going to cause more damage than what the Beisdin would inflict on a person, you can't say it. It must be Leto Eles. And if there's another way to get out of this without resorting to say Lashon Hara, so then you can't. So the seven conditions have to be present. If the seven conditions are present, you still have the issues that we spoke about before and you're still not worried, go for it. Finally, you got a head to say Lashon Hara. You know, years ago, there was a big campaign against Maran Arav Shteyman Zechet Tzadik Levrocha. Very big campaign against him. They blamed him all kinds of stuff. Yeah. For years. Put ads all over in newspapers, in the street. Mamashi was terrible. The guy who headed this campaign got married and didn't have kids for a few years. And he did some uh, introspection and he figured out it's probably because of that. I'm going against Godol Ador. I'm embarrassing him publicly. It's got to be because of that. So he goes into Reb Steinman. He says, Rebbe, I came to ask you, Mechila. Mechila, what do I have with you? So he says, I don't know if you're aware, but outside there's a very big campaign against you for years. I'm the one running it. I got married a few years ago, don't have kids, and I think that that's the reason. Please say that you're moichel me. And Reb Steinman says, no, 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 don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Rebbe, please say that you're moichel me. He says, I don't need to be moichel you. I think you get a yeshekoyach. Yeshekoyach, what do you mean yeshekoyach? I'm embarrassing you for years publicly. I'm mevaze, kvod atoya. I think I should give you a yeshekoyach. He says, what do you mean? So Rebbe Shtayman takes out Sharei Kedusha. Sharei Kedusha is Rebbe Chaim Vital, the Talmud of the Ariza. Shar Aleph, I think, Oisvav. He writes, if you had a little brain, no, no, not too much. You don't have to be a brain surgeon for this. You would get up every morning, says Reb Chaim Vital, and ask Reb Boyne Shalom HaKadosh Baruch Hu, please send me one or two embarrassments. Why? Embarrassments, you see Surim, it cleans you from your sins. What would be better? To lose an arm, chas v'shalom. To lose a son, chas v'shalom. Stock market crashing, everything disappears. What would be better? So you're embarrassed. Get over it. It cleans you from your sins. It awakens you to do tshuva. Says Reb Chaim Vital, the Tomer Devoy, Reb Moshe Kodavar, writes the same thing. Ask Yiboy Nishilorim that if Yisurim have to come to you, let it be in the form of 
Bizyoinus, it's the greatest thing. So B'Shlem says to him, I think I owe you a thank you. He says, I, I don't know, but just say that you're moichel me. And B'Shlem says, I don't think I should be moichel you. You get a yashik wayach. Rebbe really believes in this? He says, yeah. <coughs> wow, this is great. Great, great, great. He starts smiling and he turns around and he starts walking out. So B'Shlem calls him back. He says, listen, I really think I owe you a yashik wayach. But do me a big favor. Don't do this favor to other people. <laughs> you did me a big favor, but let's keep it like that. Don't do this to others. What's that? I don't know the second part of the story. <laughs> the Torah says that the Mitzuyah has to call on himself the Tame Tame Yikra. He has to announce, I am Tame. The Gibor and Shabbos Samachzain says, if a person has a tree, that the fruits, uh, can't hold it to the fruits, they keep falling down. What should one do? What is that going to help? You paint it red. Paint the trunk in red. And this will be a signal to everybody who passes by, oh, this tree is sick, let's daven for him. Let's daven for the owner, he's suffering a loss here. So the Gemara says. In other words, we want to have other people Daven for our problems. That's what the source is, the Gemara says. You have to announce your problems to the Rabbim. And people will ask Rachamim for you. Great. Comes the Chafetz Chaim and says, how does that work? What happened when Yishmael was sick? Very, very sick in the desert with his mother. Who Daven to Kodesh Baruch Both. Yishmael and Hagar. Whom did the Kodesh Baruch Hu listen to? Ishmael. Why, says Rashi? Tfila sachoyle, the davening of the sick person himself is heard first. So why do you need to paint the tree red so other people will be able to daven for you, daven for yourself? The tefillah of the patient comes in first. So why do you need to answer to others? Shout out the Chafetz Chaim. Chavetz Chaim says there's a big difference between a person who has tzara'as to a sick person. A sick person, he needs davens, a kolish bochol listens. But why did he get tzara'as? He was involved in Lashon Hara. That means he used this most powerful weapon called the mouth. He basically destroyed that weapon. That weapon is broken. It doesn't work. A kolish bochol can't listen to that tefillah. Nothing comes out of here. It comes out, it gets stops here, it blocks. It's blocked, it can't move up. Mimele Dafka Metzoya has to announce his problem to others so they should daven for him because his weapon doesn't work anymore. Mam is frightened. That's what Yalkut Aurim says, says. Why is it called Musgar? What's Musgar? The Kohen sees the nega, he sees the tsaras, and he puts him in a hezge. What's Musgar? He's quarantined. Says Yalkut Aurim, that's not where it comes from. Musgar is from the language of Sagu, closed because the gates of Shamaim are closed to this guy because they can't hear his prayer because this mouth doesn't work anymore. So I'm just frightened. But we all know why this guy got saras. Just like we know it, he knows it as well. He knows he was involved in Loshonara. So do Shiva. Fix this weapon called your mouth. What does that have to do with me? Why should I daven for this guy that has saras because he said Lashonara and his mouth doesn't work? Let him do tshuva, fix that weapon. Mimei Nakodesh Baruch will listen, will listen to his prayers. What does that have to do with me? Can't do tshuva. Ah, tshuva can always be accepted no matter what a person is involved in. Yuma peivav, gedoy le tshuva shemagaz adkise akovot. From the worst of veros, one can do tshuva, and one is commanded to do tshuva. So let him do what's do with me. Why should I do it for him? If he wouldn't be involved in this, it wouldn't happen to him. And sometimes we're actually kind of happy that it happened to this guy. Now learn a lesson. He'll never do that again. So you want me to daven for him? You see from here there are two tracks. There's a track for the person who suffers that saras or whatever it is. He has to do shuva. He has to realize what it came as a result of and he has to do shuva. Bang on his heart, real hard. I'm so sorry, I'll never do that again. But there's another trick. That's a trick for us, for the people from the outside. Seeing a person suffer, stop chas v'shalom to make the calculations. Of, oh, it's coming to him. I told him all along. I told him all along it's going to happen to him. If he wouldn't do this, this wouldn't happen. That has nothing to do with you. That's between him and Rebbe Nishadayim. 
When you see a Yid suffering, you must have it. Two different tracks, parallel lines that do not meet. Somebody once came to Rabbi Isaac Sheh. Rabbi Isaac Sheh was Oshiva of Slobodka, one of the great ethical masters. And he says, Rabbi, I have this burning, yearning desire to say Lashon Hara. Maybe the Rabbi can help me. I have a school, I have something. Instead of answering him, Rabbi Isaac Sheh says to him, you know, I just met your father last week. He came all the way from Haifa. Really, really nice guy. Really nice guy. Yeah, yeah, my father's great. He says to him, tell, him, tell me, do you have a, this yearning desire to speak Lashon Hora about your father? He says, my father. He says to him, you know, I, I'm telling you, he's a nice guy, your father, but I don't think he's the greatest tzaddik in the world. He's not like the perfect individual. I'm sure he has some shortcomings. So why can't you speak about those issues that he has? I bet it's my father. <laughs> I love my father. What do you mean? Said the Isaac Shell, you don't have a yearning desire to speak Lashon Hara. What you have is a lack of Ahav Asisol. Because if you're going to love everybody in Klal Yisrael like you love your father and you're commanded to just like you don't want to speak Lashon Hara about your father, you're not going to want to speak Lashon Hara about anyone in Klal Yisrael. So if a person feels this desire, Lashon Hara, it just means one thing. He has to work harder on Ahav Asisol. Ibn Naftali of Amsterdam said an amazing thing. You know, Rabbeinu Gershom, Meor HaGoyla, made a takana for all Ashkenazi Jewry that we're not allowed to marry more than one wife. Some Sephardim also practice this. Not if you're in Yemen. But all Sephardim take a shvua hamua under the chupa. But he made a takana. Of course you're allowed to. You're allowed much more than that. How many wives can you have? How many wives can you have? How many? Unlimited. Unlimited, unless uh, unless you're a king. Yeah. But a regular guy is many you want. Comes a benu, it's not the rabbanon. Comes a benu geshem, moragoy, it's rishonim. Makes a takana. You're not allowed to. But if the wife becomes Michigan, she's hospitalized, and she's behind the uh, Iron Curtain 40 years ago, there is a way out. One is able, according to this takana, to marry another wife. How does he do it? Heter mea rabbonim. He has to get a heter from a hundred different rabbis in three different countries. He really made it hard because he didn't, didn't want people to go and get married to two people, to two ladies. But there is a way out. So let me say, today, if somebody needs, Ashkenazi and needs another wife, what does he do? He really needs to do this. A hundred rabbonim, a heter from a hundred rabbonim, and to go to three different countries. Says in Naftali, Meyam, it's Mami Shapele. For a takana of Rishonim, it's not the Uraiyas, it's not the Rabbon, only takana of Rishonim, a person will go and seek a heter from a hundred Rabbonim to say Lashon Hora. That's from the Uraiyas, that I don't need a heter from any Rabbon. I can do it on my own, thank you very much. I don't have to travel, I don't have to call my local rabbi, pick up the phone. No, no, it's fine. I'll, I'll take care of that myself. But a takana of Rishonim, oh, that you need a heter of a hundred Rabbonim in three different countries. A pele. Amish a pele. There was a guy who got a phone call in the middle of the night. It sounded kind of uh, interesting, slash scary, slash uh, intriguing. And the guy told him, I want to meet you on this and this corner. You should come now. He came. Tall guy, long jacket. His face is kind of hidden. He's not exactly sure what he's seeing. He has a big hat covering part of his face. He says, he has a suitcase. And he says to this guy, look, I know that you work for a certain division in the army and you have certain information. I'd like to offer you a deal. You see the suitcase? And he opens it up. Full, full of hundred bills. Hundred dollar bills. Full. I need specific information, not too much. And I promise I'm not going to do anything bad with that information. I'm just very, very intrigued. And I'm going to give you the suitcase. This guy's guy a top-ranking officer in the army. Is there any way that this guy is giving him this information? And by the way, I'm from Iran. That's what the guy says. That. But, but really, I'm not going to do anything, anything bad with this. I, I promise. Anybody in his right mind would say, yeah, sure, why not? Anyone? Never. Says the Chofetz Chaim, Shmira Saloshon. We do this every single day. 
does that mean? So the guy says to the Iranian guy, no, absolutely not. And this secret agent starts laughing at him. He says, why are you laughing? He says, because you're constantly giving us all the information that we need. Whenever you speak Lashon Hara, you're giving over your secrets to the enemy. Says the Chofetz Chai, we bring some Tanat Veliyahu. Let's tell you that we learned from Eliyahu Novi. When you say Lashon Hara down here, the prosecuting agents against Klal Yisrael are saying all that they have to say upstairs at the same time. Says the Chofetz Chaim, there would never be a person, no matter if he's really not from, that would go in front of the Aaron Kodesh, open the Aaron Kodesh, and say negative things about Klal Yisrael. Even if they're true. That's the language of the Chofetz Chaim. Nobody would do that. And here, when we're saying Lashon Hara, we're doing the same thing. We're giving a koyach to the sitra acha to the perse persecuting agents to go against it. It's mamish like giving over our secrets to the enemy. So again, whenever, if we have the seven heterim and we're not afraid and we're... Realize that whenever you say Lashon Hara, the enemy is listening. That's mamish, the language of the, of the Chofetz Chaim is that's frightening. The Chofetz Chaim says, one who speaks Lashon Hara proves that he's not anticipating the Biyas HaMashiach. Why? Because if what destroyed Beis HaMikdash in Yom Adav Tesamut Beis was Lashon Hara, until we don't fix that, there is no Beis HaMikdash. So if one is still involved in the same sin, he merely is not anticipating the coming of Mashiach. He doesn't want Beis HaMikdash. The, the son-in-law of the Chofetz Chaim, Reb Tzvi Hirsch Levinson, once visited Eretz Yisrael. And back then, it's not like now. Now you take a five-hour, ten-hour plane, depends where you're coming from. You take a ride, you come back here. You're here, visit a week, two weeks, you go back. No big deal. Like back then, it's a big deal. Somebody comes to Eretz Yisrael, so, what did you see? Tell us all about it. Share. So he starts telling them. What else? What else? Tell us about Yerushalayim. So he says, I saw that there's still two things. Still in Eretz Yisrael, in Yerushalayim, all the way from the time of the second base of Middash. Still today are there. So, wow. 2,000 years. Two things are still there. Says, yeah, yeah. What are they? He says, the Koy Salam It's still there. It's, you know how old it is? It's, I saw it in my own eyes. And what's the other thing? He says, you know, the same Yetzel for Sina Shinam that destroyed the Yisamidash is still there today. Two things that we're still involved in. Koisel Baruch Hashem, we still have, we go Daven, and we still have, unfortunately, it's Yesel for Machloikes, for Lashon Hara, for Sina Shinam. There's a Pasuk in Tehillim, Perek Mandalat Pasuk Chav Gibel. The Pasuk says, Ki Alecha Horagnu Kol Hayom. This is for your sake that we are killed all the time. Chazal Darsh in this Pasuk, in Yiti Nun Zayin Amud Beis, and Chazal say, Rabbi Shua Ben Levi says, Zu Mila, Ki Alecha Horagnu, Sirus Nefesh, killing, that has to do with Mila. What does that mean? Brings Mila. It's a dangerous practice. Lichoya, taking an eight-day-old, performing a major surgery on him, Mesirus Nefesh. We're willing to do this for you. Rabbi Shua Ben Levi, Nefesh. The language of Chazal is, Amar Rabbi Shua Ben Levi, Zu Mila. Mimele. Killing, is associated with Mila. What's the meaning of the word Mila? A word. There's another Gemara. Megillah Tezayin Amud Beis. Chazal Darshan HaPasuk. We say it in Motz Shabbos. Layehudim Aysa Oyre Vesimcha Vesasun Vikar. Sasun Zu Mila. Joy is Mila. That's a word. Oh. So it comes out, obviously it refers to a Bris Mila. But literally it says Zu Mila. So it comes out. You can kill a person, horagnu zumila, with one word. You can cause him joy and sason with the same one word. If horagnu is mila and sason is mila, so you can kill and you can heal with one word. Ben Ishchai received the Sefer. The grandfather of Rebbe Yoshiv wrote a Sefer called the Leshem. Very hush of a sefer in Kabbalah. He was a big Bekuba. And he wrote the sefer and they gave it to the Ben Ishai. The Ben Ishai was so excited and so impressed, he made a yontif. He wore big day Shabbos, special day. But the Leshem doesn't know this. Years later, when the Leshem is older, they came to him and they said, Do you know 
When the Ben Ishchai received your Sefer, he was so impressed, he made an Ayontef, he wore a big day Shabbos. And we would expect the Leshem to be very happy. And the Leshem sighed and he said, Oi! Now you're telling me this? If I would have heard it back then when I had Koyach, it would propel me to action, I would write another volume. Now I don't have the Koyach. Reb Chaim Kenyevsky Zatzal says that his father, the stipular, once complained to him. You know, people don't ask me any questions here about the Keilos Yankif. Bnei Bakav today is not Bnei Bakav back then, 67 years ago. And people didn't come over and ask him. Reb Chaim went to a few people and asked them, do me a favor, go speak in, li in Limud, in learning to my father, the stipular, and ask him questions about what he wrote in Keilos Yankif. This is a pele. We think that the leshem, the stipula, they get up in the morning full of motivation, enthusiasm, zeal. They get up in the morning, morning, they get up in the middle of the night, whenever they get up, and they're working tirelessly, avoid the sashem, see what's nefesh, all out. Until somehow their eyes close, whatever it is, in the middle of the night. You see, it doesn't make a difference how great a person is, he needs that good word. The Leshem needs somebody to push him to write another Sefer? Leshem said yes. The Stipler wrote a Sefer, the biggest mitzvah. He needs people to come and ask him about it? Yeah. Gives him chizuk. If this is true to the greatest people in the world, Gedolia Gedolim. What about regular people? Some people carry a bad word that they heard from their teacher, from their parent, from their friend. Fourth grade, when they're eight years old, nine years old, 15 years old, and they're still carrying it 40, 60 years later. And some people, the reverse, they had one good word in the right way, and that keeps motivating them forever. It's a manifestation of words can heal and words can kill, and I think that's maybe the meaning of the word, of the Pasuk, Shlomo Melech wrote, Maves v'chayim b'yad aloshon. You can kill, and you can revive with the Lashon. Not only about yourself, you're involved in Lashon Hara, that can kill you, but a person that you're talking about, you can kill him and you can give him life. I mean, you can infuse him with energy and life when he's saying the right word, a positive word, an encouragement, motivation. It can be the Mamid of the entire person. Where is all this alluded to in Divrei Chazal? Last Mishnah, in Perek Yavos, Perek Hey is technically speaking the last Perek, even though there's another Perek. We normally understand it to mean, according to the effort, comes the reward. But we're saying differently. What is a pum in Aramaic? Pumayu? Mouth. According to the pum, according to one's mouth, either tsara is going to get great punishment and sorrow, or aga, or he's going to be rewarded. Everything is dependent on the mouth, whatever you decide to do with it. So part of the process of the Metzoyah, the purification process, is to go into the mikveh. How much water should be in the mikveh? 40 seah. Who says? Depends on the fish. Right. I said how much water, not how many fish. The Gemara Neiruv in Davdal Edom Udbeis says, Shia rucha chamim mei mikveh arbaim seah. Mei mikveh arbaim seah says the Ostov Tzereb, the Meir Nei Chachamim, and when I say the Ostov Tzereb, you know immediately what's coming. Math, numbers. May Mikveh in its entirety. In other words, you want to fill up the Mikveh completely. So let's look at the Milui Oisios of May Mikveh. Mem is spelled Memem. Yud is spelled Yud Vav Dalid. May Mikveh. So we have already the May now. Mikveh. Mikveh is spelled Mem Kuf Vav Hei. Mem is spelled Memem. Kuf. Kuf Vav Pei. Vav, Vav, Aleph, Vav. And Hey is spelled Hey, Hey. That's together 389. And Chazal say, May Mikveh is what? Arbaim Seah. Arbaim Seah 389. So you know that the May Mikveh, when it's full with water, it mamish exactly like Chazal said, it's Arbaim Seah. That's the measure of water that one has to have. Let's talk a little bit about Bismillah. May Mikveh, the language of Chazal and Eruvin. May mikveh arbaim seah. If you take the words may mikveh and fill them up, 389. Arbaim seah! 389. Pillay ploy. I don't know if I don't say 
Bris Mila. Can it be? Now let's put it this way. A person, circumstances his first son, unfortunately he dies. He does the same to his second son and he dies. What do we do with the third kid? No Bris Mila. Why? Normally Chazaka is constituted by something repeats itself twice, not three times. Here you're saying after two times, we're saying no Bris Mila? Sakana. Chamira, Sakanta, Mishua. And therefore, in matters of Sakana, like Brismila, like Isha Katlanis, a lethal wife, Sakana, the Chazaka is um, constituted by a action that repeats itself twice. We don't need a third time. So let me ask you a riddle. Can it be that one circumstance, his first son, and he died. His second son, he died. His third son, and he died. And he's still allowed to circumcise his fourth. You know what? The fourth also died. The fifth also died. And now he has a sixth son. Well, go ahead. Why don't you circumcise him? We'll tell him you have to circumcise him. Can it be? Has to. Has to. Can it be? From different wives. What's the difference? I mean, it's not the same. Wife. Same wife. Same wife. What's the difference? But you see the first died, second died, third died, fourth died, fifth died. I, who gave him permission to do the fourth and the fifth anyways? The third and the fourth and the fifth. And the sixth and the seventh also died. Comes the eighth baby or second? No, circumcise him. Can it be? Yes, it can. Says the Chassam Sofer, a goy had many children and he kept circumcising them and they all died. But now he converts. Since when he converts... Gershon is Geyer, Ketinok, Shenoilad. He's a new entity. He's a new Biria. His Teva changes when he becomes a Yid. And therefore, no problem. He can circumcise the next one. A tremendous Chedesh. And the Chsam Sofer is consistent with his Shita elsewhere. The Chsam Sofer writes in his Chuvas that a Yid cannot rely on a medical study that was done only on non Jews. Their bodies are different than ours. Claudius all that stood on Har Sinai, it's like a Mori. Paska Zuha Masan. The others that did not, the Zuhama is still there from the Nachash Arishon and our bodies react differently. So if it's a study that was done on both Jews and non-Jews, no problem. But if it was only done on non-Jews, some Sofia. Mamish unbelievable. Well, it's the same idea. A Jew is different. He is built differently. His teva is totally different. And therefore, in this case, he will be able to circumcise according to the Sam Sofia. Another riddle. There's a healthy baby. Eighth day. There's a healthy moyer present with all his instruments. And yet, everybody's healthy, everything is here. We will not circumcise on the eighth day. How could this be? Moyel is ready, willing, and able. It's exactly 9 a.m. Baby is strong. Moyel is strong. No Mila. Eighth day! Mitzvah de Oraisa! No Mila. He was born at 9 a.m. and eight days later, 9 a.m. We're ready to go. No. No Bris Mila. Maybe he wasn't designated. He wasn't the designated person to, uh, to do it. So and therefore? And therefore? Shabbat, then he forgot the time. Everything is here. He has all the instruments that he needs. Two possible answers, not one. First answer, Shulchan Oroch or Achayim. Shin Lamed Aleph, and again in your idea, in Chilichos Mila, in Reish Samech Vav, a Moel that's going to perform his first circumcision should not do it on Shabbos. It's his first time. We're afraid maybe he's going to do something wrong. If he does something wrong and he hurts the baby, mi meile, it's a Chilul Shabbos and not a mitzvah called Bris Mila. But if he already did it even once, he's allowed to even if he is his own father. Maybe you're already excited. No problem. But first time, you shouldn't do it. Wait till Sunday. You're not allowed to do it. Get a different moil or wait till Sunday. The other answer is a scarier one. You're already there. Shin la medalet. Seif Vav. Shulchan discusses a person who doesn't listen to a base din. They put him in nidui. Doesn't listen. What do we do with this guy? Normally a nidui is for how long? 30 days. If you don't specify anything else, 30 days. But he doesn't listen. Says the Shulchan 
אם רצו בייס דין למעט הנידוי מלמד יום, if they want to, I think I said it once here, for a different reason, if the בייס דין wants to um, make it a little shorter, not 30 days, they can, הרשוס בידם, if they want to add to the 30 days, הרשוס בידם, comes the rema and adds, ויש רשוס ביד בייס דין להחמיר עליו, the בייס דין has permission to be machmer, not just a נידוי, שלא ימונו בניו, not to circumcise his kids. Not only that, שלא ייקבר עם ימוס, not to bury him if he dies, לגרש את בניו מבייס הספר, to expel his kids from school, ולגרש את אשתו מבייס הכנסת, and to kick his rabbits and out of shul. Why? Until when? עד שיקבל עליו את הדין. When he changes, we'll change. And don't say, but you're preventing me from doing a mitzvah to your eyes. We're not preventing me, you. You're preventing yourself. It's called Ihu de Azik Anafshei. You're damaging yourself. Change your ways. Listen to Bezdin and we'll be agree, we'll agree to Malim immediately and all the other Chumwas. So that would be the answer. It's the eighth day. Everybody's healthy and willing and able, but the guy doesn't listen to Bezdin and the Bezdin decided to be Machmir on him because he's not listening and not to circumcise his kids. Why did you If we're not going to do this, there's going to be chaos in the world. We have to give the based in some kind of a koyach to enforce their rulings. Otherwise, the guy says, okay, I heard you, not interested. And he's going to go about doing whatever he wants. It's going to be chaos. But when we have koyach to do certain things or to prevent certain things from people, hopefully they will listen to us. Otherwise, it's meaningless. The based in decreed something. So we get such unbelievable koyach to maintain law and order in the land. Another riddle. You did so good in the previous ones. <laughs> Three kids are born. The first kid is born, and his bris is going to be next Sunday. Ten minutes later, another baby is born. His bris will be next Shabbos. Ten minutes later, another baby is born, and his bris will be next Friday. What? Let's go over this again. Baby number one was born, and we're going to circumcise him next Sunday. Ten minutes exactly later, second baby is born. His bris will be one day earlier on Shabbos. Ten minutes pass, another baby, Mazel Tov, is born, and his bris will be another day earlier on Friday, next Friday. You have what? Friday. No. Uh, Today, a few hours, Benesh Mashos. First baby is born. When do you want to mal him? No, but we go back in Sunday. Sunday. Second baby is born 10 minutes later. What do you want to malim? Why? Why Shabbos? Because it's Shabbos. It's after Tesek Ochavim. Good. Third baby is born 10 minutes later and you're willing to go back to Friday? Uh-oh. The third baby, the last baby, the youngest baby, born 30 minutes after the first one, will have his circumcision two days earlier. The first one you said to malim on Sunday. So how come the third one you want to... Mal on Friday, two days earlier. The first two are right. The third one was born to a family that holds like a Benutam, in all intents and purposes. <laughs> so ten minutes later, it's still daytime for them. I, I think you should make sure that the Moira is going to do it next Friday. Also holds a Benutam. <laughs> but that would be the answer. Let's move to Pesach. You know Ashkenazim don't have kidneys. Many reasons were given. But Rabbeinu Manoach, Rabbeinu Manoach is one of the Rishonim. He says, Achidesh, if it wasn't one of the Rishonim, we couldn't accept it. He says, rice and kidneys, it's a poor man's bread, doesn't give you any simcha. You're commanding v'samachta b'chagecha, it's a yontif. And we made it because rice and kidneys don't give you any simcha, you can fulfill v'samachta b'chagecha, and therefore we abstain from kidneys and Pesach. Why is such a big Hiddish? First of all, because it's a big Hiddish. But second of all, because if he's right, so you can't have it in Sukkot and Shavuos as well. And we never heard a Gizeya not to have kidneys in Sukkot and Shavuos. A Hiddish. Matzah is a matzah. But in Simcha Ela Bebasa, Basa Vayayim, Yontif requires meat. You're going to have rice? Ah. That's going to make you sad, not happy. A Hiddish. According to Rabbeinu Manoach, it's not. It's one of the Rishonim. 
It's a mamish a pele. But it's such a pele, not just for Pesach. It's a bigger pele for Sukkot and Shavuos. So why can I have rice? Nobody ever said not to have rice and kidneys on Sukkot and Shavuos. Chiddush. Ve'ayit ha'ach you have to be happy. Every yontif, right? Chametz. Not a kazait. Mashu, a crumb of chametz. Can you have it in Pesach? A crumb. There's, uh, not 60 times, it's a size, a heter. 100, 200, 5,000 corresponding to its size. Can you have a mashu chametz on Pesach? No. Ma mesha chametz? No. What if it got mixed with other things? The ta'a When did it get mixed? Pesach. No go. The oraisa? Field elf. Field elf, bro. That's the oraisa or the rabbanon? That's, that's mid rabbanon. Why? Why would you so machmir? Why would you so machmir? Because first of all, it's kares, chametz and Pesach. And second of all, because year-round, you don't separate from the chametz. So they're afraid they're going to reach and take it. It's only a chumra de Rabbonon. And how careful are we with this chumra? What people do, they fumigate their house. Ooh, people truly believe dust is chametz. And, and kids are korban Pesach, right? What people go through, they don't eat this and they don't eat that. Says Rebbe Ben Bengis, the one who gave Rebbe Yoshi a smicha. Look at that. Oilam hafu chayisi. It's similar to what we said before from Rebbe Tali from Amsterdam. And a chumra de Rabbanon, people go all out. And a mitzvah esed de oraisa kol ve'ayita ach sameach. What about a crumb of anger? Just a drop of sadness. Just one second. You're going over what the Torah, not Chazal. The Torah said you should put a smile from ear to ear for seven days. You better not be angry. You better not get sad. A crumb of sadness or anger is a deraisa. A crumb of chametz is only derabanan. What's the right prioritization? What bracha do we say for matzah? Ashkenazim, always. What's, what's matzah? What bracha do we say for matzah? Sfarim and Pesach? Sfarim on Pesach. I'm not Sfarim, not on Pesach. Mezoinus. When is it that you say Shehako, whether you are Ashkenazi or Sfarim on the matzah? Shehako on the matzah. A matzah. Gewaldig a matzah. Fresh baked. Delicious. Shehako. Not from soy. <laughs> the real deal. Lechatchila. That's what you have to say. Do not say hamoitzi. Do not say mezonos. Can it be? You can say no. But you'll be wrong. This happens when there's a Pesach Sheni. Pesach Rishon, somebody was tame or he was far away. Couldn't bring Koban Pesach. Pesach Sheni. He comes to Pesach Sheni. And when he does the koyech, matzah with the Pesach, he will say shehakol. Because the matzah only comes because of the Pesach. There's no obligation to eat matzah on Pesach Sheni. And therefore, the ikar is the matzah. I'm sorry, the ikar is the Pesach. And the matzah is tafel. So you say a bracha for the ikar, which is shehakol. And mimele, that's the bracha covers the matzah as well. So in essence, you're saying a shehakol for the matzah. Of course. Pesach Sheni coming, the real Pesach Sheni with Korban Pesach. The real one coming soon to a place near you. When is it that you're allowed to eat chametz? An yontif shel Pesach. Not talking about sick people. Healthy individuals. Ready, willing, and able. And there is matzah in front of them. And yet, you can eat chametz an yontif shel Pesach. Someone from Every riddle sounds stranger than the, is the first one. What's that? Someone from Israel. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in. Everybody's in Israel. Everybody's in Chuzlaretz. They're all in the same place. Yontev Shil Pesach. Matzah's in front of them. A lot of other good food. Also chametz. So we say, if you want, take the bread. Why not? Eight day of Pesach. Eight day Pesach, they don't have to eat matzah? They are allowed to eat chametz? Yeah, but someone from Israel. Everybody is Israeli or everybody is Chuzlaretz. Here in Israel, that's Israel. There is no eighth day. Can it be? Not everybody together. 
Can it be? No. Yes. The only little question is how? And the answer is Mishnah Bua. Mishnah Bua. Shvi Shel Pesach. This year. In Chutz Laaretz, Shmini Shel Pesach. When you add to Sefes Yontif after Tzet HaKochavim, for you it's still Yontif, but Lemaise it's not. You're allowed to eat Chametz. Lemaise it's now Kaf Bet Nisan, or in Chutz Laaretz it's Kaf Gimel Nisan. Mishnah Bua, Taf Tzadi Alef, Seif Katan Alef, in the name of the Magen Avram. The Shulchan Aruch HaRav doesn't agree, but what the Mishnah Bua says. It's impractical, because you've sold your Chametz, you've got to wait a long time. Your friend comes over, you already finished, he comes, or your neighbor comes, and he gives him, he gives him, he gives you your, his uh, bread. What's the problem? Sorry, man. You sold it, your chametz. You have to wait for the rabbi back. You back. sold your chametz. It's not your chametz. Your neighbor comes, or oh, he did a dollar already, and he finished with Pesach. It's not his chametz either, until the rabbi buys it back. The rabbi sold it back. The rabbi got it back already. It's a couple hours. You may not be doing That's a very slow rabbi. Who do you use? <laughs> his neighbor's not Jewish. His neighbor's not Jewish. What's that? His neighbor's not Jewish. Your neighbor's not Jewish. And he brings a little piece of chametz. But even if your neighbor is Jewish, first of all, you're doing Tosefet Yontif for 45 minutes. You think it takes two hours? For two hours, you don't eat chametz after Pesach? I don't know what they put the stars around there. <laughs> it goes much, much, much faster, and it must go faster, because if not, you're causing people to stumble. Really? So we do it real, real, real fast. Much different than the study in the USA. Depends where in the USA. Depends how fast the rabbi is, and he should be very fast. After Tzit Kohavim. You're doing to Sefet Yontif after Tzit Kohavim. So Lemaise, technically speaking, it's Chaf Bet Nisan. You did so good in the previous videos, let's ask another one. When is it? We're going to say Halil now for a week, right? When is it that you say Halil, but it's not Yontif? It's not Cholam It's not Rosh Chodesh. It's not Chanukah. It's not. <laughs> Halil with a bracha. Not in Svira Soimer, no matter what day of the... On the calendar. When Nisan has been saved by miraculous. What's that? When it cries, is that something in Gemara Tadit? A halal with a bracha? Today, today. Today, this year. This year. No cholamod, no chanukah, no rosh chodesh. No cholam, no yontif. And yet? You say in the evening? What's that? Something miraculous happened to Christ's life. This year. This year, last year. Miracles always happening. Every single year. According to some opinion, Lemaise, we don't do like that. And with a bracha? You don't say a bracha. Chidesh. Erev Pesach, coming this year, Monday, Erev Pesach. At the time that you bake matzis, there is a mina gisroel according to the Sidu Arizal and the Chida to say halel without a bracha. Some don't say Halal Bichlal. Darchei Moshe in the name of Maram Sheik. Maybe, we don't want you to speak, because maybe some spit will go on the mat, so when you bake it, don't say anything. But, some say Halal with a bracha. When you're baking matzis Erev Pesach, that's the minig of Chernobyl. Shulchan Atoh brings it, Zerazav, and Shalat Yishuv Yisrael Bekiva, Yosef. Why do they do it? Shhh, Chidish? Because otherwise we wouldn't have anything to ask as a riddle. We stumble, that's the reason. <laughs> the Sidur HaRizal says to say, it's clear. It's Erev Pesach. They used to bring at that time, Korban Pesach. How can you not say Halil? Machloi Kishi say with the bracha or not. But at this time, Klal Yisrael are going, you're not allowed to do any melachos from Chatzos. It's very shlag yantif. It's like Cholomoyed. Cholomoyed, you say Halil. So say now. And yet, it's a Shumet Eskidish. Abu Isai, when is there another Indian to eat matzah? Not on Pesach Rishon. And some hold on Pesach Sheni that they eat matzah. Not on Pesach Rishon. Not on Pesach Sheni to those who have that minal. When else other than that? And you have bread in front of you. And yet, there's an Indian to eat matzah. Can it be? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. You already got two points. <laughs> now to get the other 20 points, you have to say when. And Indian after matzah. Matzah. Ma, so you have, you have two chalas? Have matzah on this day. Shalos Yishuvah sits Eliezer, Chelek Yudalet Simen, Samer Dalet, but before him, Reb Chaim Palaji, Chaim Larosh, Anagada Shel Pesach. He writes, I have a minag to keep my matzahs from Pesach all the way to Rosh Hashanah, to eat in Rosh Hashanah, 
לשם חג הפסח, I eat it on ראש השנה. Has some kind of a connection, he brings it from the Zohar HaKodesh. He, saw, I, he says, I learned this from the Zohar HaKodesh, and I eat matzah on ראש השנה. I heard that the Maybe he wants to come to Judgment Day with an indication, look what a tzaddik I was on uh, Pesach, everything worked out well for me. Maybe. But he was an Indian to eat matzah in a different time. Chiddush. Ha'alach ma'an yadi achlu avatana b'mitzrayim. What language? Why are you American? Can't speak Hebrew? Everything else in the Agada is Hebrew. So Davka here we have to speak in Aramaic. Why? So they say, so, so translate everything else to Aramaic. I'll tell you why. There was a guy who was very, very, very cheap. And he was afraid that if he will say, anyone who's poor should come and eat, people will actually understand what he's saying and they're going to come. So he decided to say in Aramaic. So they told him, you can just close the window and nobody will listen. He said, no, I'm afraid. My great-grandfather, some malachim came to him. And what if malachim come and they want to participate, you know, want to participate in the meal? So she said, what is going to help you to speak in Aramaic? He says, go in Shabbos. Shabbos, Dafyud, Beis, Abu Beis, Chazal, Say, Malachim, don't understand Aramaic. He says, this is my insurance policy. I close the windows and I say in Aramaic, nobody can listen. Great. In Kovna, there was a very, very cheap guy. And people came to the rabbi and they said, how will this cheap guy be able to say, Allah, Maria, Dechlo, Vazana, Kol Dichvi, and anybody who wants will come. So the rabbi said, that's not a problem. His son already asks him, Manishtana halaylaze. And what does he answer? Avadi mayinu lefaro. So Chazal say, Rashi brings in Pashat Vaigash, Paro, goizer ve'eno mekayim, mavtiach ve'eno oise. He promises, but he doesn't go through. So we have to do a zeicher for the Shia Buddha of Mitzrayim during tonight. So I promise, anybody who comes, anybody who wants can come and participate. But I'm just not going to be like Paro. I'm going to promise and I'm not going to fulfill it. And with that I do a zeicher, to its yes mitzvah. <laughs> the problem is, both of them didn't know the Ravan. The Ravan is one of the Rishonim. And he says, when we say, we declare, call Dichvin Yaisevir, anyone who wants can come. We're not talking to people from the outside. Because he says, it's impossible that we're speaking to them. Because you close the doors, the windows are shut. Klal Yisrael are not liars. So who are you speaking to? People in your household. This guy's in his bedroom, this guy's in the porch, this guy's there. Guys, it's time to eat. Kol Dichvi and all those who are hungry in this household should come and eat. Me, Mele, if they would have heard that, they wouldn't really need to resort to all kinds of pilpulim with uh, people who are cheap. There was actually a, a, a guy who came to the rabbi and said, do you have to do bdikas chametz next week? Do you have to do bdikas chametz in your yard? Yes. Shulchan yes. begs to differ. Shuhan Or, Tafla Med Gimel, Vav, writes, you don't need to. The birds, the ravens will come and eat it up. The Ramah brings a steer from a Shuhan Or in a different place. The Maisa Shuhan Or says no. So this guy comes to the rabbi and says, Rebbe, do I need to do Dikas Hametz? He says, what do you mean? Of course not. Shuhan Or says, you don't need to. He says, no, I tell you the truth, I have a problem. I have this bad Mida. I'm very, very cheap. Okay, so learn Musa, work on yourself. What does it have to do with this? Rebbe, there's a Gemorin base. Rebbe Shobin Levi teaches that birds recognize people who are cheap and they don't come to eat from their food. Birds hate people who are cheap. Afilu oifos hashamayim. That's the language of Chazal. Even the birds recognize people who are cheap and they don't come. So Mimele, normal people don't have to check in their yard because the birds will come. To me, the birds are not coming. So do I have to do Bdikas Hametz? What do you say, Abbas? Does he have to do Bdikas Hametz? Yes. Why? There's obligation. He knows that there's Hametz. The obligation is built on the fact that ravens and birds are coming. They're not coming to me, he says. Correct. <laughs> so where's the obligation? Yes, oh, yes, sir. He do, does need to do Bdikas Hametz. Yes. Ah, okay. Good, 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 yes. good. Anyone begs to differ? Pasha, he has to do it, right? Yeah. Three reasons why he doesn't have to do it. First of all, you mafkir your Hametz? You're saying it should be ke'afra de'ara, so it's no longer yours. If it's no longer yours, the birds are coming. The birds don't come to eat the chametz of a person who's stingy, but that's when it's owned by him. 
He is doing half care. If it's half care, they are coming. Second of all. If it's Afra, they don't need Afra. Ke Afra de Ara in that that I have no shaykhus to it, but it's not Afar, you see it. And if the birds want to eat it, they're going to eat it. Everybody does half care, and yet the birds come. Second answer. You said no, that he doesn't have to do Bikas Hamid because he's very stingy. That means you have some kind of a scale, and you know up to here, stingy from here and up, oh, you don't have to. How does it work? Doesn't everybody has a tit? Just a drop? Just a little. Do we know to say you're more stingy than others, so you have to do Bikas Hamid? You? No, I think you're pretty good. Who can say that? When you say about yourself, I'm stingy, Mistama, he's such a tzaddik that he does constant introspection and he, he has that drop, a drop, little that he feels, man, he did show up for 15 times already. We have no tools to measure how stingy the person is and based on that to decide. And we cannot change halacha which is written in the Shulchan Oruch because of reasons which are not completely natural and were not mentioned in the Shulchan Oruch itself or the price game. The Shulchan Oruch should have said, if you're stingy, this doesn't apply and you have to do Dikas Hametz. Chuhanor didn't say this. Emele, he has to do Dikas Hametz. He doesn't have to do Dikas Hametz like, just like everybody else. Achenu kol beis Yisrael. Anesunim batzava. Uva shivya. Ha'om dimen bayam uven bayabash uven mitachas layabash ha'amok amirachem aleyem v'yotziem. Mitzara l'rvach ha'mehafeila le'ola. Mishirbud le'geula. Ashto ba'agolo uvezman kori ve'noimar omeyim. Amen. 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 Amen.